I'm going to reveal what to say to your assistant referees in the pre-match chat. Referees often struggle with talking to their assistants, especially if they haven't worked with them before. After this video, you're going to feel more confident that you can be in the middle and enjoy the game. Let's jump right in. Elite referees will do their pre-match chat behind closed doors. They know it's essential to communicate effectively and work as a team to ensure the match goes smoothly. These referees and assistants work with each other week in and week out. But what if you're not an elite referee? If you're a grassroots referee, you might turn up to the game on your own and you might meet your assistants for the first time. This is especially true if your assistants have been plucked out of the crowd. So learning how to build rapport is essential and it'll make you feel at ease with your assistants and have confidence in your ability. And we've developed the top five tips to improve your pre-match briefing. Number one is write it down. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. Download our cheat sheet, for example. You can find this in a link in our description. As you go through your career, you can add things to this checklist so you can improve your briefing over time. If you go into every briefing without structure, you'll never be able to improve. Having something tangible to fall back on can give you loads of confidence as well. If you think this might hinder your speaking style, use bullet points instead. Tip two is building rapport. There are loads of different ways that you can build rapport quickly. And here's a couple of things we like to do. We like to show gratitude by thanking our assistants for their service, turning up on time, and this allows them to feel part of the team. We also like to bring pre-match treats, whether this be Jaffa cake or our personal favorites that are Harry Bone. Chatting through experiences with your assistants. What was their last game? How long have you been an assistant? Discuss the latest big game, whether that be your game or the decisions from the weekend in the Premier League. Our third tip is make roles and responsibilities clear. If they've never been an assistant before, it's important to deliver this information clearly and calmly. Again, writing this stuff down, whether that be on a piece of paper or on a phone, makes it much easier to get right. The most important bits of information here are who's going to be assistant referee one and who's going to be assistant referee two. Where are they based on the pitch? What side of the pitch are they going to be working on? Who's doing what roles, whether that be subs, full match record, goals, cars and any misconduct? What you want out of them for your pre-match checks, if you want them to give them free kicks and misconduct, as well as any extraordinary events such as mass confrontations, fan trouble, blood injury and abandoning the game. Here's an example of me giving out roles and responsibilities to my assistants. First of all, perhaps your AR1 on the list, so we're just going to go with that today. So that means you're going to be on bench side, Coops, you're going to be over on junior side. So perhaps in terms of your roles and responsibilities, you're going to be dealing with subs. They're going to be yours at all times. I won't take them off you. So I need a full match record for me, just in case I go down. Um, it's really important that we make sure we do that. So Coops, I want you to record goals and anything on your say-so. So if you want a yellow card and you want a red card, record that on your say-so. So that means when we come to report it, we can report it together. We're going to play left backs as always. Yeah, no right backs today, right wingers. So that means that you're going to be, perhaps you're going to be on this side and Coops, you're going to be over on that side. Mass confrontation. Have a look at the benches for me. They're quite far apart, so they shouldn't be getting too involved. Have a quick look and see if they are trying to lump two bells out of each other. Coops come straight on. What I tend to say is three, four, five players I can deal with. Six, seven, eight is when I probably need you to step in. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk yeah, we're going to get rid of the reds, we're going to deal with the yellows and we're going to remember who starts it. Basically, what I want is the player that instigates it and the player that retaliates. They are the two main principles that we need. Yeah, And if we can remember restart, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Blood injuries as well is a common one at the moment. What's going to happen is, is they're usually going to be in four corners. And if it's down in, on your side of the pitch, yeah, in terms of your active line, you can deal with the blood injury. I totally trust you, but just make sure they come on in a stoppage in play. Buzz me and we can get them on. If it's down on your non-active line, I will deal with it for you and save the running. Tip four, how you like to work. There may be some things that you like and dislike out of your assistants, and by letting them know in, in advance means that you won't get thrown off mid-match. Some of the things I like to say is how we're going to lead in. Get it right downstairs so we can look great upstairs. Injury time. When am I going to let them know that there's going to be injury time? Usually it's done on 43 minutes and then on the 88th minute so they can get the board up on time. How we look when we raise the flags. Half-time and full-time expectations, whether I want them to meet me in the middle or go straight into the changing room. Here's an example of me explaining how I like to work. How I like to work is we'll, we'll start at the goal line and work up. Goal kicks, it's quite a miserable day, so monitor everyone, keep yourself warm um, for the goal kicks. They look like you know, two teams that are going to be playing out the back. So the chances are you're going to be in and around those right areas anyway. Fly kicks do the same, monitor the first couple and then get up with the second rearmost defender. Yeah. And then what that does is it means that everybody knows we're looking for the first couple and then we're always on top of things. In terms of throw-ins, I don't do this like leading in thirds. Basically, I'll lead down here and I'll be like, 
just look at me down here. If you think I'm wrong, buzz, and then I'll go with you, but get it right down here so we look great upstairs, and that's the easy stuff. In terms of free kicks in and outside the box, yeah, this is something that causes a lot of confusion, so communication for us off, off the pitch is massive. If it's outside the box, be big and flag with me, and then step two yards out so I can clearly say it's a free kick. I can blow, whistle, free kick. Yep, we know, look at the line, oh, he's there in line, bang. It looks smart. If it's a penalty, straight to the corner flag, and we know I can go straight to a penalty as well. I'll be looking at you in those decisions as well. Basically, I'll blow the whistle, look, see what you've done if you've gone left or right, and then I'll make the decision after that. We've got more time than we think. Our fifth and final tip is building confidence. Giving the assistants the feeling that they know what they're doing and they can work with you as a team is vital. If they walk onto the pitch without this, they may make poor decisions that you have to deal with. Ways of building confidence can include asking them to talk to players and get involved with the game, reminding them that they are referees too and they have license to make decisions when I'm not there. If there is a decision or I make, reassure them that I'm there or you are there to deal with the problem and we can get through the problem. They've got more time than they realise. Here's an example of me building confidence within my team. In terms of your involvement in free kicks, you're both referees yourself as well, both level fours, both know what you're doing. So if you want to get involved, I've absolutely got no problems with you doing that at all. All I ask from you guys is think to yourself, if you were the referee, would you want that flag from the assistant? And if the answer is yes, get involved. If the answer is no, have a second thought. Um, if you are going to give a free kick, be big, be bold, and just give an indication of what it's for, if it's a push or a pull, so I can sell it straight away. Finally, we recommend ending on a high. The pre-match briefing can be a bit of a drag, full of essential information, but not leaving everyone pumped and ready to give it their all. Give them some praise and appreciation so they can have that extra skip in their step. But other than that, boys, plenty of thumbs up, plenty of smiles. We'll enjoy the day, yeah? It's going to be a great day out. Um, but are there any questions from me? No, it sounds oh, good, good to me. From me. Good boys, all right, let's go in and get a cup of tea. So there you have it, our top five tips of a pre-match briefing with assistant referees. Leave a comment if you have any recommendations that didn't make the list. Make sure you download our checklist. The link is in our description. And if you want to learn about how to become a better referee and a more confident referee, subscribe to our channel for more content like this.